Welcome to College Algebra, Section 1.1. I'm Gregory Carlson. Now, all of Chapter 1 should be a review from your previous math classes, so let's get started. The first topic is probably the most fundamental topic in algebra, which is solving equations. And this means if I have an, ex an equation like 3x plus 2 equals 26, I want to find out what number do I plug in for this variable right here, such that both sides of the equal sign are the same number. Knowing how to do this allows us to do any application where we don't know what a number is or we're trying to find a number. So here it says decide if 8 is the solution set. And what these little curly brackets mean is a collection of objects or a set. And so the let's find out if it's the solution. We do that by just plugging in the number or substituting the number just like this. 3 times 8 plus 2, and I'm going to put a question mark above the equal sign because we don't know if they're equal or not. 3 times 8 is 24, plus 2 is maybe equal to 26, and sure enough, 24 plus 2 is 26. So we have the two sides of the equal sign equaling each other, and so therefore 8 is the solution set. So the answer to the first problem is yes. Now, if it's not, there, well, let's just do the next one. So the next one is 2m plus 6 minus 1 is equal to 4m plus 5. Decide if negative 3 is the solution set. So once again, we plug in negative 3 every time I see an m. Like this is maybe equal to the other side of the equation. So let's see if negative 3 is the solution set. Doing the order of operations, we do the inside of the parentheses first. Negative 3 plus 6 is 3 is maybe equal to, do the multiply first before the addition, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, and these two sides are maybe equal to each other. So let's keep going, 2 times 3 is 6, so on the left I have 6 minus 1 is maybe equal to negative 12 plus 5, which is equal to negative 7, and it's quite clear that this isn't going to be the same on both sides. 6 minus 1 is 5, so we get 5 is equal to negative 7, which is not true. And so that means that no, negative 3 is not the solution set to this equation. Again, a solution set is just a collection of things. And if there's nothing in the solution set, it's called the empty set, which we represent either with empty brackets or a 0 with a slash through it. Now, the empty set, that's a different meaning than 0, because 0 could be a solution to an equation. An empty set is just a collection of no objects. So let's review solving basic equations so that we can know how to do this. This is perhaps the most important skill in, in, in algebra before calculus. Here we have the equation 4x minus 10 is equal to 33, and we want to know what value for x is going to make both sides of the equal sign match each other. So the idea is to isolate the x variable. First, let's move this negative 10 over. It's subtracting, so we want to add 10. And we want to add 10 on both sides of the equal sign to keep the equation equal. These cancel, and the 4x comes down. 4x is equal to 43. Next step is to divide by 4 on both sides. We divide by 4 because this is 4 times x, and so we divide to cancel the multiply operation. And so we get left with the answer x is equal to 43 divided by 4. And I think most math teachers would appreciate it if you kept your answer in improper fraction form, because that's the exact answer. However, if you wanted to convert that into a decimal, you could do that by throwing it in your calculator. 44 divided by 3 is equal, oops, I'm sorry, 44 divided by 4. Let's try again, 43 divided by 4 is equal to 10.75. So if you want, you can convert it to 10.75 and do that if you would like. So that is the solution to that first equation. Let's do the next one. We have 2x plus 3x plus 2 equals 5 times x plus 4 minus 1. This equation is a little bit more complicated because we have more terms, but we can solve it. You, on the le left hand, when you have multiple terms on both sides, first you want to try to simplify both sides of the equation. So combine 2x and 3x on this side. Those are like terms that can combine. So those combine to 5x plus 2. The left side will not simplify any further after this. On the right hand side, we have 5 outside of some parentheses. So we should use the distributive property, which hopefully you're familiar with. 5 times x is 5x. 5x plus 4, um, excuse me, 5x times 4 is equal to 20. So I get 5x plus 20 minus 1. 
Now I can simplify this side of the equation. So the left side I'll keep the same, 5x plus 2 is equal to, on the right hand side 20 minus 1 is 19, so I have 5x plus 19. Now you should think that this kind of looks a little strange here because I have 5x on both sides of the equation and sure enough this is going to lead to a problem because if I subtract 5x on both sides to try to move all the x's over, they all cancel and I get 2 is equal to 19. Now we know this is not true, 2 is not equal to 19, and so that means that there is no value for x that will make, make this equation be true. There's nothing you can plug in for x to make that equation true, and so therefore the answer to the equation is the empty set. If you, just, if you want to write the words no solution, that's okay. I would accept that. Or if you want to be clever, you can write a zero with a line through it to represent the empty set or two empty brackets. The solution set is the empty set, but if you just want to write no solution, that's fine for now. I have time for a few more. Let's try the next one. Now you notice how I show all of my work. I've maybe solved about 87,000 equations in my life, give or take one or two, and I still show all of this work because it means that I'm much more likely to get the right answer, I'm less likely to make a mistake, and I'm less likely to mix up a minus sign or some other silly thing. And I really encourage you to show all of your work as well, just like I did here. Every single line, every single step, you'll be much more likely to get the right answer if you do that. So let's try the next one. We have 5 times x plus 3 minus 2 is equal to 11 minus 2x minus 9. Let's simplify the left-hand side a little bit by doing the distributive property, which will give me 5x plus 15 minus 2. Now, here is a place where a lot of scholars trip up. You see that minus sign right there? That means we're subtracting the entire quantity, and we need to actually apply the minus sign with the distributive property. So this will become 11 minus 2x plus 9. 11 minus 2x plus 9 because the minus sign flips both of the signs in the problem. Now that we've done that, we can simplify both sides of the equations by adding like terms. I can do 15 minus 2, which is 13. 11 will combine with 9 on the right-hand side. So 11 plus 9 is 20. At this point, there are several things we could do to solve the equation. Uh, what I would do here is add 2x because it would make one minus sign go away. So let's add 2x to cancel it right there. Draw your happy little line. 5x plus 2x is 7x. The 13 comes down and we get 20. Almost there, let's subtract 13. Now that we have all the x's on one side, we want to isolate that x right there. So subtract 13 on both sides. On the left hand side, I keep the 7x. And on the right hand side, 20 minus 13 is equal to 7. One step away, divide both sides by 7, and we get the answer x is equal to 1. And I'm going to take this opportunity to remind you that one of the nice things about college algebra and this entire course is you almost always will be able to check your answer. So let's do that. Let's see if this is actually the solution to the equation by plugging it back in. So I'm going to take 1 and I'm going to plug it in here. So here we would have 1 plus 3, which would be 4, times 5 would be 20. So this entire piece is 20, minus 2, so that's 18. So the left-hand side of the equation would be 18. Now let's plug 1 in over here. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 9 is negative 7. So this is 11 minus negative 7. Well, 11 minus negative 7, those two minuses become a plus. So that's 11 plus 7. We get 18 again. So on both sides, we get 18. And that makes us very happy because we checked our answer. And if you're taking a test and you do this, you know you're going to get the right answer. And I encourage you to do that on every single problem you do on a test so that you can get as high a grade as you can. By the way, x equals 1 is going to be the only solution to this equation. No other number will work. And the reason for that is called the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra, which we're going to explore in more detail later in this course. But for now, I'm up to 10 minutes, so let's stop here and continue section 1.1, the inaugural college algebra section, after this.